All right, hi, we're back. We're back with Jenny Holm, who's the author of Sunny Side Up. How cool to have you here. We talked to you in New York. Yep. With a big group. Yes, at now Pecan, we, yeah, yeah. Now we get to focus just on you, and we have we, Pame Alexander, who's been with us for a while, and I wondered, do you guys know, you guys have met before? We have. Uh, but okay. I only met him after he became the Newberry Medalist. That's right. I, made him, I met him after he became famous. That was a wonderful <laughs> experience, though. We were in the lobby of maybe the St. Regis or some hotel in San Francisco. Yeah. It was after the Newberry Banquet, and there were just children's book authors in the, in, near the bar in the lobby, and uh, we were hungry. Yes, and that was great. One, a one pack guy, of one of the authors, Bogathers. he ordered pizzas for us. And I know, one of the authors ordered pizzas to be delivered. And to Dan that Santat hotel. bought oh, champagne, and we that. just, yeah, that's it, where we met. Yes, I met, I met you over pizza. <laughs> Which is sort of a great segue into this question. Uh oh. This children's book community. Yes. You've been in it far longer than I, mm -hmm. very prolific, yep. extremely talented. Aww. What do you, What do you have to say about this community and how just awesome it is? I love it. It's just like, it's. It is an amazing community. Everybody's super supportive. We love these kind of events because we get to see each other. Because usually we're in our own little rooms and our own little heads with our laptops. Right. So it's nice to just be with friends and it's just, it's a wonderful community. And you know, tell Rich, we it's, it's non-competitive. No, we totally, I mean, because we're all, there are always children. Yeah. There's always it keeps children. You, it keeps you level and sane and yes. understanding what you're here for. Yeah, it doesn't matter. You know, there's always Honestly, a I, I noticed it. I mean, I've certainly noticed it for a long time, but there does seem to be something that's even more stronger than ever before in the children's book community. I mean, across the entire spectrum. And we saw it at book cons, certainly when I was with you. It's amazing. The amount of love that is heaped on each other's work and the yeah. number of collaborations. It's also one of the few genres where there's this much collaboration. Right. Yes. Where people are working with each other and teaming up um, out of mutual respect. Certainly you see that in fiction and adult fiction, but nothing like you do in your genres. Yeah. It's pretty special. I, I totally agree. I was, um, I had an interview with a kid a little bit earlier and I was with Peter Cease and, and the kid, the child interviewer asked, have you, have you guys ever worked together? And I'm thinking, we haven't, but I would be happy to. That <laughs> yeah. sounds like an awesome idea. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about Sunnyside Up. I mean, I got to know you through Baby Mouse first, and yep. so did my kids and mm -hmm. my daughter Nora, especially as a huge Baby Mouse fan. But Sunny Side Up, for me, it's like a trip back this nostalgia lane because I remember the bicentennial and I remember all the magic moments of that time period. Yep. And I try to tell my kids, like little things, like the quarters that had like bicentennial quarters at the time and yep. bicentennial half dollars, which they had. Um, and that whole period of time, you capture it so magically in this book. Like, I felt it. I especially felt that Floridian 1976 thing. I spent some time there, too. Yeah. What a cool thing. And I'm glad that there's somebody capturing it for the kids so they can show it to them. I, I feel like I'm, I'm forcing them to relive it because I actually, Matt and I grew up outside of Philadelphia, and that was kind of like ground zero for the bicentennial. There right. was so much happening there that that entire year of our life. Right. Everything in school was about the bicentennial. Right. We were dressing big word. up. Yeah, it was crazy. It was such a big part of our childhood. Right. Um, and when I even mention it in passing to my own kids, they're like, what? You yeah, know? what is that? Bicentennial, huh? Yeah. And then our right. grandfather, um, he uh, moved to Florida after our grandmother died in the 70s and into an over 55 and over retirement community. And the first time we went, we were just dumbfounded. like. We, you have to be over 55 years old. And my grandfather was very nervous and he says, yes, I have to, you have to all have badges, all you children. Yeah. You can't just walk around. Yeah. What are you thinking? You can't go to the pool or go anywhere without a badge, you know. And, and there's so a that general was so amount crazy. of grumpiness in yes. some of those communities. And uh, I, you know, it's sort of normal. You know, we had CC Bell here earlier and I love how also another part of, the, of what I see a lot of, especially the graphic novelists too, mm -hmm. is a, an element of autobiography in some of these books. Yeah. And there's like, you start to mine some of those things from your own past and they become really wonderful stories, especially when mixed with these beautiful pictures. Yeah. Uh, how, when you're thinking about that, how much of that sort of personal element do you, like, it, you gotta be comfortable putting yourself out there like that. Yeah, I mean, it, it took a little um, getting used to, but it was, it was, an, it was easier for me because my brother, Matt's my brother, my, the illustrator and the co-creator. And so when I was writing the manuscript, I didn't have to go into a lot of detail right. about what I'm describing. So I would say, you know, the golf course, like by grandpa's condo, and he knew 
because he had been there. Yeah, he knew right. what, what, how to describe it. Oh, and that's, how to draw. that's helpful. So that sure. was super easy. Yeah. Whereas if I had probably collaborated with a different artist, I would have had to find all that reference art. Um, but yeah, it is a little. It was a little nerve-wracking about how much we put out there. But I've had so many kids come up to me since the book is out, and uh, grown-ups talk to me about how happy that they were that I bro we broached the subject. Mm -hmm. And so, in the the fourteenth goldfish, one of my favorites, and Sunny Side Up, one of my new favorites. You grandfathers play a big role. I've got grandpa on the brain. You do. <laughs> I don't know I'm what's curious, going on. like. Was your grandfather just awesome? So my grandfather, the one in Sunny Side Up, he still is alive and he's 100 years old. He just no. turned 100 in April. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah, so he is very awesome. Yeah. Does he know that, uh, that he's in this book? He doesn't, he's not really yeah. quite with it anymore, yeah. but oh, yeah. How cool. What yeah. an homage though. I know. Yeah, it's so, really wonderful. Yeah. My daughter and I, uh, well she, she, she woke up about 1.45 a.m. this morning. She's Poor been baby. up for a while. Um, and she was playing on her iPad. And my <laughs> thing was, you're gonna have to read. So before you get on the iPad, and so she started reading Sunny Side Up. Okay, good. And I'm, she said, you're gonna have to read three chapters. So, and she read it aloud to me, because I was up with her. <laughs> and she's like, all right, I read my three chapters. And I'm like, no, you have to read another one. <laughs> and I kept, you have to read another one. And of course, I was interested in it. I didn't want her to stop. You know, like, entertain so, me, please. And so we finally got to a point where she just was like, I can't put it down now. You figured out sort of how to write for kids and adults. You know, the same thing with the 14 goldfish. Yeah. And I'm curious, is like, how did that come to be? How did you, how do you do that? I think I just... So I well. Oh, stop. I like to just amuse myself when I'm writing. I want it to be funny to me, too. So I think sometimes in some of the, the books, like some of the, the bicentennial stuff, will go over a lot of the kids' heads. Right. But the grown-ups okay. will know. Yeah, it's fine. They'll figure it out yet later. Right. Yeah. And the parents will get a little, will laugh about that. Exactly. Especially if they're reading together. Yeah. And, and that's great. I, I think especially comics are actually a medium you can read um, with your kid and parents and talk about what's happening between the panels, like what really happened between these scenes. And that's a, a good thing to talk about. I got a question I know a lot of our viewers want to know. Were you always this fly of a dresser? <laughs> the glasses, the, the, the dress, it's the my, shoes, it's every my time I see you. It's my sunny side up dress. You know, you were, yeah, we saw you in New York in bright yellow, I believe, I remember. So you know and, what it um, is? I, used to, I lived in New York City for 14 years, and all I ever wore was black, because that's uh, the uniform of New York. And I moved to California recently, and everybody, it's so colorful, so. Wow. Well, as soon as Esquire features, like, the new generation of kid-lit writers, <laughs> <laughs> you know? SLJ. You're going to be, the, exactly. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> We've got it for them. <laughs> we'll call them now. Exactly. <laughs> Jason Reynolds would have to be in that one too. Absolutely. Dan Santat with the tie. Oh, and the red shirt. Yes. Yeah. Of course. Right, I love this inner circle <laughs> stuff because you know, everybody watching who knows people are like, oh yes. But I have a couple questions because you do t write about a, uh, a time period and a, sort of a perspective that comes with being an adult. Right. You know, and yet kids relate to it. They can see that you're doing something. There's a scene in here where you're at, I think, um, an all-you-can-eat place. And you've got a relatively small plate. I say you, you've got, you know, you've got a s relatively small plate. But at the all-you-can-eat place, the grandparents, this was my grandparents, yes. like loaded up and they're like worried about something that they're running out of over right. there, even <laughs> though they've got more food than they can eat in three years. Yes. But they're like, they, they should get some more of that orange jello over there. And I laughed hysterically at that because it's a perspective that you can only have as an adult. You notice it when you're a kid, but you don't laugh at it until you're older a little bit, you know? And I think that there's something about having that where kids are reading your stuff and they're sensing what it is to be an adult. When they are an older person, like, you know, whatever you want to call yourself. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they're getting it. They're getting it that there's a, like a humor level to that right. age okay. group and they're, they're associating it, they get it. And I love that you're able to sort of cross that divide between teen writers and, and, young, and younger readers and bring them up with you, you know, it's a, sort of that sort of level of humor that's kind of funny. I think a lot of writers, I know, I have always been, I'm sure you are too, we pay attention to a lot of the world around us. I find I'm always pay attention, paying attention to people and things and sometimes interesting moments are in little things like at the cafeteria line, yeah. <laughs> you know. I was yeah. always obsessed with those cafeteria lines. Exactly. So. That's funny. Well, there's so many of those in here. 
and uh, it's a wonderful book. And I wonder how many, will you do some more about your sort of growing up and where are you going next? I mean, what's the next thing? I don't know. Anything is possible. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's wonderful to have you here. Thank you so much. Thanks so much for joining us again and for Kwame. I like having you both of you guys here. Thank, Thank you so, so much.